info. Awesome. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's go, guys. Here we are. It is I cast your freaking awesome replays, and today we are casting the no micro challenge, where players weren't allowed to micro. As always, that's kind of open to the player's interpretation. Well, you know, the line is never completely clear. If your game's hilarious as all hell, I'll probably accept it. We'll see what happens in this one. Up here in the top right hand side in the red playing Protoss, he's a man and he's random. He is the random man. Down here in the bottom left hand side of the map. <laughs> this one actually suits next week's challenge really well. <laughs> Just remember guys, don't, even if you are this guy's name, don't do it in the workplace. He is Poon Chaser. A chaser of the poon. By the way, someone in chat, please right now look up the etymology of poon. Where the fuck did that come from? Who one day decided poon was going to be a word and, and what it was going to mean? That's, uh, you know, honestly a little bit of a, a weird kind of decision making process in my opinion but who am i to judge anyway guys if you want to get your replays in for next week the challenge is workplace harassment so show your most inappropriate behavior in the enemy workplace send your submissions into eonblue95 at gmail.com as per always send it as an attachment don't send a link to some fucking vague upload website which you know we're not going to click on because we don't like viruses um, and yeah, just put icy fire as the title of your email as well. So workplace harassment, honestly, this one's so open to you guys. You can do whatever the hell you want to do. You can do almost anything. Uh, you just need to need to actually kind of find a way to fuck up your opponent's workers. And I mean, generally do things that are the more inappropriate, the better. All right. So like the funnier, the better. I want to see Colossus drops in worker lines. I want to see... Uh, I don't know, like, uh, do that thing with a Zerg player, moves like a Corruptor there and a Corruptor there and like a Corruptor behind the third and fourth and then just like morphs them all into Broodlords and there's like a single Broodlord behind each worker line and you're like, lol, 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 it's like the dumbest, most hilarious harassment in the game. I want to see that sort of shit, guys. Bring out that workplace harassment. Bring out that creative shit. I want to see people dropping ghosts and nuking and whatever the hell else you can come up with. For now... Um, it's looking a little bit like two cannons at the front here. Random man. He claws and kicks, but gets his little head bit, little bit random. into the highway. Thankfully, koalas are already fucking brain damaged, so this isn't even a problem. Thank you so much. We had that guy cyber just before with the five month three subs there. Don't worry, pig, I can't draw either. Uh, if you guys, of course, watching on YouTube, you just missed out my beautiful artwork of a zergling. I'll show you at the end of this game, so uh, make sure you don't tune out as I will have this towards the end of this game's video. And Neon Samurai1980 with the six month anniversary says, it's that time of the month again. Happy to resub to the Bacon Fest. That time of the month. I'm glad that's what you refer to, Neon Samurai. You know, time to tune into Pig. It's that time of the month where I feel a little bit crabby, need some chocolate, and I blame my husband for everything that goes wrong. Um, fantastic. Thanks, Neon Samurai. Glad to fill that role in your life. No worries, dude. Uh, okay, so what we've got here, guys, was the fucking gold base into the natural, and random man was like, oh, fucking hell, man, he saw, like, no natural, didn't scout the main, <laughs> so he's, like, dropping cannons, like, ah, oh, shit, gotta make sure I don't die, eventually scouted the gold, and, uh, and, and yeah, oh, shit, is this, like, is this Mineral Thief 2.0? Did he make a new account called Poon Chaser? He's just making drones and spines and spores like a madman right now. His economy is off the chain. Damn. His economy is tastier than some eggs Tyrone right now. This shit is insane. What the fuck? So he's got a he's got a fat economy. Random man's like, well, it's time to do something. I'm gonna make some oracles. By the way, got a cannon in the main base. <laughs> May have been traumatized by eight zerglings dropping in my base one time. Maybe, just maybe. Um, by the way, wouldn't you just, I think there's some Zerg players watching right now who are like, you know what would be really cool is if I had 10 Banelings right now, just like, even just 5 Banelings, you blow up both cannons just instantly, the shield battery just be there like a little floating disco ball doing nothing, actually it doesn't even look like a disco ball, doesn't it look like the Death Star, does that not look like a miniature Death Star, like, 
that Protoss were like, we need some sort of shield generator, we need a power source, we're all out of these fancy fucking crystals from our home planet that we use to build pylons. You know what? Jump into an alternate dimension, grab the Death Star, shrink ray it down to a tiny little thing, and stick it in this little golden girdle. And be like, oh yeah, you can heal things now. So that's a repurposed Death Star. Never realized that till this moment, but apparently it is. Here we go, there's a Spore Crawler and a Queen. This Oracle's like, oh yeah, well, I'm gonna kill one drone. Yeah, I'm pretty fucking good at harassment, I am. Oh god, I'm like, ah, oh, coming in damage another drone. Let's fly into this queen. No, let's... Oh, I'm gonna run away. I'm gonna survive. I'll leave my laser beam on, though, because I like draining my energy. I really like it, and I'm out. Oh, fuck, I'm not really gonna be able to do anything for, like, three minutes in this game. Hmm. Guess I'll just fly home. Better go report to the boss that I'm, uh, kind of gonna be fucking useless for the rest of this one. Oh, yeah. All right. Meanwhile, we've got fucking two Stargate and Iron. Wait, no, this is Graviton. What? He's, oh, he's making Phoenix and the carrier upgrade. Okay. The classic, I'm kind of confused. Are we just gonna see someone turtles carriers on two base? Oh, okay. So this is something, sometimes people send in replays of this when I do an air only challenge or something like that for Icy Farm. And my advice is always, if you don't want your replay to ever get picked, that's what you do. You can build a wall of cannons and then just try to make carriers. Because if there's one thing I enjoy casting, it's you not interacting with your opponent at all, building a wall of static defense, and, and then just generally just fucking chilling and, and not really doing anything at all. Um, I imagine it's about as fun as it would probably be to cast a game of Civilization. I don't know, is there even a way to do that? Is there Civilization multiplayer commentary is out there? Does that work or is it, as I imagine, the most boring thing ever? I love Civ, it's, it's, it's a great game. But holy shit, I imagine casting it would be fucking terrible. You're like, oh, he went for animal husbandry. I assume now he's going to get some horses. And you're like, ah. Oh, yeah, cool. This is really fucking boring, in fact, for the first uh, three hours of the seven hour match. Uh, even at double speed or whatever they play for multiplayer. Man, I imagine that shit would be terrible. You guys can let me know if I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm just ignorant. Uh, I know I'm pretty ignorant about a lot of things. Speaking of what Poon Chaser isn't ignorant about, it's money. Poon Chaser might not have had a lot of success chasing the Phoenix booty this game, uh, but is actually doing pretty well with just kind of massing up the units. Now, I did hear someone say it was Ugandan? Poon? Yama Pickle says, 1910, of uncertain origin, probably the New Orleans Creole, I don't I never knew how to say, say that word. Creole? Creole? From French, putain, prostitute. And from Old French, puta, which means whore. So Poon came from, probably from New Orleans, so it was an American thing, from putain and puta. Okay, I had no idea. That's cool. So guys, we just learnt where Poon came from. And of course, Poon Chaser, he already knew that because he named himself such a high class and refined uh, name. Very fancy. So we're learning some new things. So I'm pretty sure the Ugandan comment was a troll. That was someone just making some shit up. How dare you try and throw off my, uh, I think, Poonani? I don't think it's from Poon Poonani, is it? Short for Poon Tang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if Poontang is, it was really a word before Poon was. I think that's the opposite of how it developed, mate. <laughs> I definitely know all about Puto. Puta. Fucking, um, that's what they're always calling each other in Narcos, right? They're always calling each other, like, whatever the mother, mother Puta is, or whatever. Mother prostitute, I think. I think that's what they say, right? I'm trying to remember. I haven't watched Narcos in a while. Is season two any good? I haven't actually. I, I've watched almost no, none of season two. I don't know why. It just didn't grab me the same way. I was like, isn't it over at the end of season one? I don't know. I should. I should probably watch that next time I got a long flight. Uh, meanwhile, Poon Chaser here is like, you know, it'd be a really cool way to chase the Poon. Let's just get all the boys together in a car. We'll we'll put the suspension right down. All right. And then we're going to drive up and down the main road in our town. And when we see attractive females that we might potentially want to mate with, we're going to honk the horn at them. Because I feel like this is a good way to try and seduce the opposite gender. Just so, just so you guys know, if you ever want to try to pick up 
Even if you're girls, trust me, I'll actually, I, I want to see more girls try this technique because it's proven to have such a great success rate. Just get all together and just, just shout at your opponent. Here we go. They're going to drive down the main street. Let's see how this one works. They're like, oh, hey, ladies, who wants to come and ride with eight dudes in a fucking truck? We've got some doof doof music coming out the back, yeah. And these ladies apparently are armed with assault rifles. So they're coming in and saying, yeah, we're going to fucking blast your faces off, mate. You have like six dudes that can shoot. Uh, we actually have guns. So, um, yeah, welcome to Carrier Town, motherfucker. And it looks like the Poon Chasers here, I mean, they're going to do some damage, right? They're, they're going to get in there and piss off a bunch of people. I mean, yeah, they kill the Nexus. Does it really achieve that much? I don't know. Personally, I'm cheering for the, the, the women up here who are blasting the fuck out of these ignorant dudes who actually think this is a good pickup technique. These are the sort of the guys who run around saying my Rubik's Cube pickup line. Unironically, they actually think it's a good one. When they say, hey baby, I'm like the Rubik's Cube, the more you play with me, the harder I get. They actually say that. No irony, no sense of, haha, I'm a dumbass. It's just a, I think I'm pretty good picking up the poon. I chase it. I honk my car horn, I play some doof doof, and everyone just comes a running because I'm that much of a charmer. Of course, Poon Chaser says, well, you know what? Let's build even more drones. I might not have charm, but I have money. And eventually, you're usually going to end up slightly less miserable in life if you've got enough money. So Poon Chaser is going to come over with about 40 billion Hydralisks, has those 2-2 two -two upgrades, has double Spire and a Hive on the way, and is like, you know what? I'm not allowed to micro, that is the challenge. <laughs> and that is kind of what we're seeing, right? Literally, it's like, well, we can't shoot up. And those roaches just, they just fucking sat there. And he's gonna, he's, he's doing it again. So let's, let's go to his camera, by the way. We gotta watch from his cam- Yeah, he's, he's like not even looking at the fight at all. This is fucking fantastic. Oh shit, the Hydras are actually doing pretty well this time. All right, so it's been a remax on a little bit of charm. Uh, I don't know if it's actually enough though. Probably been watching a few too many James Bond movies and actually thinking um, generally just like being a bit of a prick is actually a good way to pick people up. Um, oh, actually the interceptors are out. These ladies ran out of ammo. They're going to reload. They're going to pull back a little bit. And these douchebags actually deny the third again. I'm, I'm kind of sad for Random Man. I feel like if Random Man took this base earlier, could have kind of had that up despite losing this one. Because you got to remember Poon Chaser. Wait, that? Poon Chaser just pulled back? I'm counting that as micro. Disqualified! Not, not really. That's okay. I don't think there was anything other than a clicking the army back on the map. Let's check the APM tab. 150 APM. Let's go to the camera of Poon Chaser. Poon Chaser's like, it's cool. I'm just going to build 4,000 units. Funnily enough, this is actually the hard count of the carriers. The number one thing people struggle with is they freak out. They're trying to over micro their engagements. All you need to do is just build an unlimited economy and then fucking A-move stuff, and usually you'll beat these sort of carrier builds. And it seems like Poon Chaser has figured that out. Poon Chaser's Small like, yeah, I'm just gonna fucking make upgrades attack. and not even look at my army, hey. And uh, meanwhile, this bunch of uh, big beastie carriers coming out across the map, they've got plus two. They've got a couple of these little phoenixes here with them. Oh, they weren't even on A-move. One carrier just goes down for free. The Void Ray falls for free as well. Finally, they decide to start fighting. <laughs> Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. Oh Jesus. Have you ever seen a bunch of sadder boys in the back of their car thinking they're being a bunch of charmers and then just getting their heads blown off? These carriers are going to jump in on this side. We've got Phoenix heading on. Uh, meanwhile, we've got another Poon chasing counterattack. These cannons look like they're finally going to get a chance to maybe do something. I don't even know. The carriers are like, yeah, let's fucking kill everything. And uh, Poon Chase is like, you know what, there's carriers in my base, I better build drones. I feel like if I build drones right now, I definitely can't lose. That's how we chase the Poon. Logical decisions all the way. It's all about being smart, being sly, and generally doing shit which doesn't make that much sense. Speaking of that much sense, um, that drone just died. That's got nothing to do with sense, but anyway, it did die to those rocks, and that's a horrible, horrible way to die. What have we got, guys? Just mass spore crawlers, but they're kind of spread out. So these spores are like, hey, we're going to kill like three interceptors before we die. Oh, I'll take that. I killed like five interceptors. Oh, cool. And uh, of course, random man's like, do I care? Do I look like I care? 
Well, actually I do because I'm almost out of minerals at home and I do need to kill friggin' everything with these interceptors that I've got because I've only got a thousand minerals in the bank. I guess it's got maybe oh, about 2,000 more minerals to mine from these patches before they do run out. Oh god, it's an Overlord Massacre. Poon Chaser is the one who's getting pooned right now. Um, is that a verb? Pooned? We're going to use that as a verb today. We're gonna we're gonna see how that one goes. For all of the English professors out there watching, don't worry, guys. No, no English professors watch my stream. Um, I'm sorry for the absolute butchering of the language that we are doing right now. But honestly, I, can you describe it any other way? I feel a little bit like Poon Chaser himself is getting pooned. Random man is like, how about a nice tall glass of interceptors? How does that taste? Is can you can you taste it in the back of your throat? That the, the acid, the fucking the feeling of failure and regret. Yes, you can, can't you? You can feel that. Now, I'd love to see a recall right now, but it seems like Random Man has forgot that that spell exists. He's kind of like, oh, actually, no, I am going to do it, but to the wrong base. He says, you know what, I'll let you kill that Nexus. Don't worry, you can have it. That's fine. I'm also going to lose a lot of my probes. Remember, of course, Poon Chaser, unable to micro. Once again, getting pooned. Oh, actually, clicks the Mutalisks away. Closest thing to micro this game, once again. And is still just a moving shit. The Phoenix and Carriers are coming in. They say, get the fuck out of my base. The Roaches and Hydras disappear. And this is that point where Poon Chaser is kind of panicking and saying, God damn it, pig. Can't you let me control me stuff? I really feel like if I could actually focus fire things and maybe use my units intelligently, I wouldn't be in such a shit position. And I'm like, mate, it's fine. You've got 37 bases on the edge of the map. I think you're actually doing pretty well. Meanwhile, this probe and these mutalisks having a little bit of a Mexican standoff. Turns out it are, uh, it are, it is the mutalisks that blink first and they back away. The probe's like, yeah, this is my territory, cunt. I've got shiny minerals. I can shoot lasers out of these minerals. Yeah, you don't want to fucking mess with me. They're like, oh, we don't want to fucking mess with him. Yeah, oh, shit. Even though we've got these spiky fucking... Look at this spiky little protrube, protruding fucking worm thing they got down here. Holy shit, that's kind of frightening. But apparently not as frightening as a little fucking glowy boy with some blue minerals. So they're like, oh, man, they're thinking about it. They're thinking... Nope, nope. They're like, nope, we're going to back out. We're really fucking afraid of that lightning mineral. Pretty sure that guy can cast Sire Storm. Uh jokes on them, he can't, that probe just happens to be very, very brave. Meanwhile, the carriers are going to attack in here, they're like, yeah, let's just kill some shit, hey, I feel like uh, we can maybe win this game. Mutalists are like, oh, what was that about winning the game, mate? Uh, because Mutalisks are A-moving onto you once again, and uh, you're going to fucking lose everything. These lava sitting here, little pack of wriggly boys up against a bunch of zappy boys and they're just having a bit of a party aren't they no they're like oh you're tickling me you're tickling me oh fuck i'm dead oh, oh fuck i'm dead oh fuck i'm dead and eventually those lava do start going down we've got these mutalists of course focus firing really well with that a move void rays void rays come in oh my god maybe these are the chad rays from last week i think they might be Got a couple Chad Rays in there. If you guys didn't know, Void Rays, the perfect counter for Mutalisks, except for the, the part where they're not, but, you know, nonetheless. Um, funnily enough, the Phoenix are on a different control group, but you can tell that random man here, a player who clearly every game makes carriers and cannons on two base, has really good control group usage, is definitely not just F2-ing the whole army. When the carriers could be killing the last few bases of Zerg and finishing the game, we can see that Random Man using the aptitude, the control group set up here, very advanced control group setup, is all about splitting the army, making the correct tactical decisions, and definitely not fucking dying to a slow Zergling counterattack in the base trade. You know, Random Man's all about that strategy, the multitasking, the counterattacks, definitely doesn't want to make a silly decision like losing your last bit of income and all of your probes for no fucking reason. Uh, does end up recalling there is like, you know what? You know, your economy was kind of pooned. Uh, you were kind of fucked. But you know what? I'm going to give you about 45 minutes to rebuild off these many expansions on the edge of the map. I feel like I should give you a chance. It's just something I should do as a random man. I should say, well, you clearly haven't microed this whole game. You're, you know, you're there. We just want to have a gentleman's match. Ha ha ha. You know, I know it was just a joke when you were driving up and down, honking your horn at me, going, ha ha, come on, get in the back of the cart. No, I mean, I'm ready to win the game now. I better split my army up, though. Actually, nah, you know, I could use control groups, but I'm, I think I'm going to press F2, A, and then left click on the minimap instead. I feel like this would just be a little bit more of a fun way to win. I mean, honestly, what could backfire? What could possibly go wrong? I think it's fine. 
Ah, oh, it's time to poon this guy anyway. I love pooning people. Fucking poon. It's a great verb, isn't it? So the Void Raisin Carrier is coming in. Meanwhile, oh my god. Zergling speed has finished. What could possibly go wrong? He asked himself. Um, well, guess what? Recall is 54 seconds off cooldown. Uh, I think he might have realized he's just done a big doo-doo because random man is starting to fly across the map. Once again, what's splitting your army? No, let's just F2 and A move. That's the way to do it when you're in a base trade scenario. Remember guys, most important thing when your opponent only has a couple of units that can't fight your army at all is to keep your army in one big ball and don't use any of it to protect your base. Random man, learning from the best, gets almost home, then changes his mind and is like, nah, let's just protect this probe. We're not going to get back there in time so let's just fucking you know we can just build like a pylon out here or something and um yeah i feel like that's gonna survive unfortunately doesn't know that assimilators have 900 hit points more than double a pylon for less mineral cost that's a bit of a silly decision there. oh no oh no the assimilator is gonna fucking go down the pylon's gonna go down you're gonna put down another pylon okay another pylon goes down here that pylon falls oh my god down to the last 95 minerals this pylon, this is the one pylon that he's, you know, random man still not figuring out how to split the- OH MY GOD! What the fuck? I feel like I just saw something I would never see. We just saw the Protoss carrier army split in two. Random man defying all expectations. <laughs> but, uh, these Zergans are like, you know what, we don't really give a fuck. Um, GG. <laughs> <laughs> the godly split at the perfect moment. Poon Chaser. Unfortunately, he capitalizes on that. And Random Man definitely didn't have that one in the bag. Just, uh, you know, was out strategized there. Made the perfect decision of A, moving the army back and forwards across the map. And that F2 addiction, as always, as always, doing very well for the player at hand. Definitely, definitely well done there. So remember guys, when you're in the base trade, copy random man's, random man's uh, vision there. The vision of A moving carriers back and forth across the largest map in the entire pool. The vision of recalling to the wrong nexus and not saving that natural. Not walling off either and letting slow zerglings and speedlings wreck your face. Honestly though, random man, well played, mate. Well played. But at the same time, uh, in the immortal words of anyone who's ever died to someone who turtles behind cannons and builds carriers every game, maybe you deserved it. Maybe. I don't know. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm sure you're a nice person. I'm sure you're you're lovely. You're probably a decent human being, but realistically, I'm pretty sure everyone watching right now has probably kind of wished you'd not fucking play the way that you do because it's really hard to play against, frustrating and annoying. And apparently taking 17 bases and A-moving your army the whole time is the way to counter it. So GG's, there we go. It went nice and well. We've got some questions in chat about next week's topic. Do you have to kill workers for the next Icy Far? You just have to harass their workplace. It's always open to imperson uh, to impersonation? Interpretation. <laughs> the challenge is always open to impersonation. Is always open to interpretation. Can you just use stasis wards? Of course. Mate, mate, just just what you've got to imagine is your opponent's base is, is the workplace. Now imagine you're a fucking disco ball oracle laser boy. You run up to fucking Linda's desk and you throw a stasis trap on her base. And she's like, I've got a deadline this afternoon. Can you fucking not? And you're like, mm. and she's like, can you fucking not? And you're like, mm. and the stasis ward finishes and you freeze her for like eight hours. And she's just fucking stuck. She misses dinner. Doesn't even get to kiss her kids goodnight. That sounds like workplace harassment to me. If it sounds like the workplace harassment to you, then yes, you can count it. It fits the challenge for next week. Go ahead and do it. It's going to work out quite nicely. Let's go into map number two of the No Micro iCast, your freaking awesome replays, guys. Down here in the bottom left hand, 